It's been such a long time since I've talked about my story and my spiritual awakening, so I think it's time for an update. My spiritual awakening happened four years ago in the middle of a restaurant with a friend that I was having dinner with, and I want to discuss that story and what catapulted me into this beautiful and amazing spiritual life that I'm living now. I had my major spiritual awakening four years ago and it was something that I never expected to happen. It was something that was so random and it really kind of happened out of nowhere. But I'm so thankful for it and I'm so thankful that it happened in the way that it did because I don't think that if I was forced into doing the reading that I had done, I don't think that I would have pursued anything any further. So I know that I kind of had to be thrown into the deep end, so to speak, in order to get the trajectory of my mediumship, my spiritual life to go in the direction that it needed to go in. So I was 36 years old and I'm going to a restaurant with one of my friends and it's about six or seven o'clock at night. And those who know me know that I'm in bed by 7 p.m., sometimes sooner than that. I am very much a morning person. I can get up 4 a.m., no problem. I am ready to go with no issues. But if you want me to do something at like six, seven, eight, or even nine o'clock at night, I am not the friend to call to go out. But my friend had called and invited me to go out and I hadn't seen him in a while and I wanted to enjoy the evening because like I said, I never go out. So I get to the location of this restaurant. Now he had a friend that worked there. She was a manager or a supervisor and she works at this restaurant. So she was gonna wait on us. And I get into the parking lot and I park my car. And the moment I put my car in park, I get this feeling over me that is so uncomfortable and so new to me. I started getting like really nauseous, even now talking about it, remembering that experience. It's like my stomach clenched and I did not know this feeling. I did not like this feeling. And I was literally on the verge of grabbing my phone to tell my friend, I gotta go, I don't feel good when his car pulled up next to me. And I'm like, okay, I have to go in here. So we're walking in. And if you have followed my channel for a while, you'll know that my father was killed by somebody in 2014. And ever since then, he leaves me hearts everywhere I go. I see a heart, it's either in a photograph, it's on the ground, it's in a, a rock, it's shaped like a heart. I see them everywhere I go. So on the way into this restaurant, there's hearts all over the ground, lots and lots and lots of them. And I thought, wow, this is super unusual. And I always know when it's my dad. Like I'll look at a heart and I will know that's from my dad. And I'm looking down at the ground and I'm pointing them out to my friend because he knows that these are from my dad as well. And I'm looking down and I'm pointing and I'm saying, you know, I don't really feel like these are from my dad. He goes, well, they have to be, what else would they be? So we kind of just chalked it up to that and we went into the restaurant. And as soon as we went inside, I had that dreadful, eerie feeling again but when we got seated and his friend came up to me everything went away now we were in the restaurant for about two hours i was feeling really good and i'm thinking oh maybe it was just stomach something maybe something just didn't sit right you know i'm trying to make up reasons in my mind why i felt this really weird anxiety feeling out of nowhere and so we're really enjoying the night we get up to go home and we're gonna go our separate ways and we get outside and that feeling comes back the second I walk outside. Like this dreaded, what's gonna happen? I don't know what's going on. I don't feel good out of nowhere. I'm feeling sick to my stomach. What is happening here? So I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna go home and lay down. I must not be feeling really well. And as we're walking, I look at the hearts again and again, they don't feel like they are for me. They don't feel the magic that they normally feel for me. And when I get to my car, I put my hand out to pull the handle. It's literally you pull the handle of the car to open the door. And it's like my mind turned off in that moment. I could not figure out how to open the door of my car. My mind just whoop, it went off. And my friend's like, are you okay? What's, what's the matter? I could not figure out how to open the door. We were not drinking. We didn't have drinks. You know, we shared appetizers and that was it. I don't know what's wrong, but I feel like I'm supposed to go back inside of this restaurant. 
you have to go with me. And he's like, okay, what are we gonna do in there? I don't know. And I said, I don't know either. But I knew in my body, I knew that I was supposed to go back inside. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I got there, but I knew I was supposed to go back inside of this restaurant. So he went with me. I'm holding on to him, locked arm in arm with him. Like, you are my support. You have to come with me. And we get inside and that feeling is subsiding it's still there a little bit but now it's replaced with my own actual conscious anxiety it's like my soul knew what was going to happen my soul and my spiritual abilities knew what was going to happen so it's my way of kicking in my nervous system so to speak but now i'm consciously aware of this anxiety so it's a different feeling uh, when I look back now, I know that that's what that was. My spirit, my soul knew what was about to happen. And so it's like my nervous system kicked in. And that's why it didn't really feel like anything I had felt in terms of like anxiety and feeling sick to my stomach. And we go inside and this feeling is there, but it's also mixed with my own conscious awareness. And I look at his friend and I say, we have to go talk to her. And he goes, we just talked to her for two hours. What are what happened? But he's like so supportive and, and so considerate of it. He's going along with it. And we go over to his friend. And the minute we go stand next to her, I feel a woman standing literally touching my back. And I look and there's no one there. And I'm like, there's a woman standing right here. And I immediately knew that it was her mother. And I said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. I I'm having these feelings and, and things that are coming up, but I, I feel like a woman is standing right here for you. And she's telling me that she's your mom. And she had lost her mother. I didn't know that. I've never met her before. My friend was friends with her. I've never met her. I never knew her. I didn't even know her name until we got there. Okay, so then she starts telling me stuff. And I'm saying it to her and everything I said was accurate, everything. And now I've never done mediumship. I'd never been a psychic. I've never been a medium. I've never connected to spirit. I never had an imaginary friend. You hear stories about these really famous mediums talking about how they saw spirits from a very young age or how they had imaginary friends from a very young age. I never had that. I never had that imaginary friend. I never saw spirit. I never communicated with spirit. I had always wanted to. I felt really called to it in my 20s, especially uh, especially when you would see John Edward or James Van Prague, Teresa Caputo. When you would see them on television, I would have this calling that's supposed to be me that that's me and that would happen in a split second and then your mind kicks in and you're like wait a minute you're not born that way you have to be born as a medium in order to be one and that's just not true that i've discovered for myself that's not true i'm in the restaurant and this information is all making sense everything she's telling me everything i'm feeling is accurate and then i feel her gone in just a flash of a second and i am said to this girl we'll call her Haley. i said to Haley. You know, I, I don't feel her presence anymore. It's almost like, you know, within a flash, she was gone. And so we were talking and she's like, well, let's let's go outside. Obviously, we're in a restaurant. This is very personal. So we go outside. The moment we step outside, I, the hearts are drawn to my attention again. And I knew instinctively right then and there that they were for her. And then her grandmother comes right next to me. And her grandmother says, her mom and I have been leaving these here for her, but she doesn't notice she doesn't see them she doesn't pay attention to them and i said okay she, Haley and my friend they were talking at this time and i interrupted and i said i'm so sorry it's happening again i feel like your grandma's here and she's telling me about these hearts and there were so many so what she was saying like really resonated with me they were everywhere all over the ground lots of hearts and so then she started talking about a water heater and she started talking about a car accident now again I have never met Haley. I didn't even know her name until we got there. We're just calling her Haley for this video. I had never even known her name until I got there. Everything that I said and felt was accurate, everything. I felt her grandmother so close to me, like she was right at my back. And then the same thing happened. She had given a few more messages um, about Haley's brother and then like gone immediately just like that. Looking back, I realized that they left so quickly because I couldn't hold that connection. I didn't know how, I didn't even know I was holding or even having a connection at the time. That is what started me on this journey. Now, 
as I was saying in the beginning of the video, I really feel like I was thrown into the deep end in order to really wake me up to this aspect of my life, this aspect of myself. This spiritual awakening really catapulted me forward in so many different spiritual ways that I don't think I would have been able to wake up so to speak, as much as I did, if that didn't happen to me. I was able to communicate so clearly as if this person was standing right next to me, whispering the words in my ear so clearly, so accurately. I don't believe if that hadn't happened, I would not have investigated any further. If it had been an intuition or it had been a hunch, I don't think I would have explored it very much further because again we are all told and programmed to believe that we're not mediums we're not psychic but we are every person is a soul and every soul can connect to another soul mediumistically psychically and i didn't know that at the time i do now but if i hadn't had that major major experience i don't think that i would have really researched it much further so i know that i had to be thrown in in order to explore and find more things out about myself. So from there, I started researching mediumship. I started researching how you can become a medium if you've never been one, if you've never had those experiences. I was finding mentors and I was taking classes and I was giving readings and the readings were not like they were with Haley. Like with Haley, I knew everything immediately. It was like I was her mom. It was like I was her grandmother. The information was so crystal clear. And then I'm in these practice readings, these practice sessions, and it's like pulling and straining and trying so hard to recreate that moment of pure connection, of pure bliss between me and this soul. I realize now that I've been doing this for four years that, again, I was thrown into the deep end because I had to have that experience in order to feel what it felt like and keep going for it. So it, it's taken me a long time to have the confidence to even say I'm a medium. When I first started my YouTube channel, I kept saying I'm a developing medium. I even had a different handle at the time. I think it was developing with Mel. I was afraid to call myself a medium because that connection at the very beginning, that very first reading was so different than what I was experiencing in the very beginning of my journey with mediumship mentors. Now that connection I have is the exact same. Every time I give a mediumship reading, I feel that utter connection. I feel that utter vibrance between me and the soul. I feel so alive when I'm connecting and giving a reading. But I've had little spiritual awakenings since then. I've had huge epiphanies about my life, about myself since then. For example, I've had an, an awakening into Reiki. I never even heard of Reiki. I didn't even know what it was until I'm on Instagram and I keep seeing Reiki. I keep seeing Reiki. There's a Reiki class. This is Reiki. This is what Reiki does. And I had a dream about Reiki. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was healing someone with my hands. In the dream, I didn't know it was Reiki, but looking back, it was Reiki. And so I took a Reiki level one course and it like awakened me to this healing modality. I love to heal with Reiki. I love to use the healing modality. I had another spiritual awakening with crystalline work, communicating with crystals and crystal skulls and using crystalline energy to heal others. So I've really been diving heavily into myself and into my spirituality and having little mini spiritual awakenings along the way. But that first one was amazing. I'm so thankful that it happened. I get this question a lot. I was not religious beforehand. I'm not really religious now. I have nothing against religion at all. It's just that my family, we never did those things when I was a child. We didn't go to church. I do believe in Jesus. I do believe in God. I talk to them all the time. Uh, but I'm, I've never been in a religious background. A lot of people want to know that. And I am somebody that believes in religion and believes in having the ability to believe and choose what you want to believe in. I don't think any one 
thing is bigger or better than the other. I'm very much a free thinker in the fact that I want you to find what you believe in and, and go for it. But I want you to also allow room for new things to come in, new beliefs to come in, new energy to come in. And that's how I live my life now. I, I leave it open to being able to experience new things. I leave my life open to be able to experience new energy, new spiritual things, new religious things, anything that will teach me and help me grow. I'm all about learning. And so I'm just really thankful. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I love to create videos like this. If you have any questions or a comment, even if you just wanna say hello, leave that down below. It really does help my channel show YouTube that these videos are valuable and that they wanna be seen. So I would appreciate anything you can do. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.